Good evening. Welcome to Vibe with Five's live show um, here tonight at the Pavilion. My name's Flex. I do a show on the channel called The Take On. Um, it's with Anton Ferdinand and Danny Murphy. That's every Wednesday on the channel. We'll be having great fun with that. And as you can see, um, Vibe with Five is continuing to just break the boundaries, keep growing. Um, and that's why Rio and the whole team have invited you guys here um, today. So without any further ado, we're going to get the guys on stage. Um, we're going to do a little bit of Q&A afterwards as well, get the interaction with you guys, get the chance to put some questions to them. Um, so let's welcome to the stage, Mr. Joel Bayer, Mr. Stephen Housen, and Mr. Rio Ferdinand. Hello, everyone. Can you guys hear us well? Good, good, good. Hello, thank you very much for coming. Uh, before we start, I want to say a massive shout out to the Pavilion for having us here. Uh, it's a really nice place. You guys all look good. Uh, and yeah, we're really excited. So myself, my name is Joel Bayer, Stephen Housen, Rio Ferdinand. Uh, welcome to the live showing of Vibe with Five. We're really excited as we've been working really hard on this and the guys behind the scenes as well. So thank you very much. And uh, Rio, the Five brand, very, very, very interesting. I want you to start us with the journey. How did it start? Because I remember the magazines, the caps, all that stuff, but we're here today. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, on the parades, I've got pictures when we used to do, when we used to win at Man United. Um, we used to do parades. <laughs> <laughs> I used to always put the five cap on and represent. But um, yeah, it started off like just a digital magazine, really, and we were kind of early in that scene, and um, it was like a lifestyle magazine, stuff that I was interested in. The team at New Era kind of helped forge that and make that. And it was a... Football, obviously, sport, music, film, entertainment. So uh, loads of our first covers were like, and interviews were LeBron James, Federer, um, Drake, just as he was popping off, um, 50 Cent, did I say him? Like, yeah. uh, loads of different names anyway. So we was doing that, and then all of a sudden, YouTube just started like blowing up. And as I was still playing at that time, I couldn't really kind of really push myself into it fully. Kind of took our foot off the pedal a little bit. And then realised, listen, we need to get into this YouTube space as well and the content space. And we were talking to Man United actually about uh, doing more content and United were a little bit like, no, no, we'll just wait and see what happens. And I said, right, we're going to go for it and started to become more consistent with it. And I think that's been the key. I think these guys are obviously content creators and have been in the game a bit longer than me, but consistency with putting out product and content is is the absolute killer. If you can get that, then you've got a real opportunity to kind of make ways and, and make an imprint in the in the industry. So that's where we, where we are now. And we made it obviously really football based now rather than lifestyle football completely across the board. Um, and it's an always switched on platform that always talks about the game. And one of the key things was that, that I wanted was to bring current and ex players closer to the content creators and the fans so if you look at all of the shows that we've got the common theme is that we've got a, somebody who's played the game alongside somebody that comes in and wants to talk about the game and thinks that they know everything about the game Stephen Housen ladies and gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> I can't make up for you mate <laughs> uh, but you know what it's uh, it's grown uh, massively everywhere we go now you know people are recognizing us off five it's really beautiful to see now we've got loads of shows on the platform coming up people of course we've got viable five with guests we've got this or that we've got boots balls and bras uh, with farah and Urfa. we've got the take on as flex was saying uh the Steve and ash show shout out to ashley williams he's at the back there he's going to be coming on soon as well still hasn't got a name that show uh, still no name <laughs> the working um, title was Steve and ash talking us. gas but no one really wanted to go with that nah. oh okay <laughs> Um, the Five Insider featuring uh, David Ornstein, Match Day 360, where we go to games and we talk to fans outside. Uh, Football Heritage with our guys, Culture Cam and Harry Pinero, who are also inside the building today. Yeah, uh, and Beyond the 90 by Harry Pinero, which we're working on as well. Now, sick show. It's a proper sick show. Now, to be honest with you, it's, it's all well and good me saying, oh, we've got these great shows, but I want you guys to watch this video with uh, the highlights reel done by Tom and the production team. If you can help us put that on, Joe, that'll be brilliant. This is the one thing that I, um, I, you miss as a player, is like being able to go in and around the football culture. So I'll advise any player when they retire, man, just to like, just go to a, a, a big championship, spend some time there and like immerse yourself in, in this culture. I love it. Football brings people together, man. It's true. I 
a night out with Jack Grealish or a night out with Jude Bellingham? <laughs> oh, difficult. <laughs> I would love to do it both, actually. <laughs> look at this, look. It's my first one ever, ever. <laughs> <laughs> I want it off anyway. Welcome to Football Heritage. This is a quiz show with myself, Harry Pinero, and my good friend, Culture Camp. Welcome back to the five insider, the busiest man in football right now has joined me. David Orsley is in the building. Yo, it's your boy, H for the Source, Harry Pinero, and welcome to Beyond the 90. Now, this one's a special one for me. You guys know how much I love Paul's goals. You see, Messi is, is unbelievable. Control, the pass could be really good. We've got like exceptional young could talent. We, we could win it. <laughs> I was playing Spartak Moscow and now I'm playing Champions League final for Man United and I was like, is it this real? Oh, oh, the... took his place. He took more than my place. <laughs> <laughs> I think this kid could be very, very special. You will see Fury against AJ next. A night out with Ian Wright or Ali McCoy. <laughs> oh, oh, hey. No, I suppose he's got yeah, a bit more little. than me. Yeah, yeah, he's got a bit <laughs> I think Arsenal done very well and it's something to build upon. And I'm not going to have you saying to me, I'm not disputing that. Carabao Cup. And he come to me the next day, Jose, and he said, you're never going to play for me again, just like that. My favourite player is the goalkeeper, Manu Neuer. What's your part? Oh, he doesn't have a name. <laughs> Paul, I'm with uh, Box to Box and Hugo, with Michael as well. So I've just given it a lovely rub, so we're going to win. There we go. <laughs> That's the Scalzi. <laughs> like, literally, gun to your head. Look, mate, where's, where's that number? I think my journey here has just begun. They say that there's nothing new that's under the sun. Things that make me lose my focus. And all these parts of me. Thanks for watching. Anything to say? No. That's a really good video. Thank you uh, for making us look good, Tom. Uh, now, honestly, um, we've got a lot of stuff coming and we're really interested. And you said there's a big show that's coming up. Uh, it's called Beyond the 90 um, with Harry Pinero. Harry, you know, do us a favour, Harry. Can you come here, please, for a second? This is Harry Pinero, one of the biggest content creators in the world right now. He's got his own brand on He's as well. He's got his own brand on as well. We are, you knew we he was winning. on stage. Yeah, yeah, of course, Brandon. My son's got to eat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, Harry, uh, yes. obviously you've had a relationship with Rio uh, and myself for a while. Obviously, you now know Steve. Uh, Beyond the 90, yeah. we pitched you the idea. Absolutely loved it. And you're in two feet in, man. Can you hold tell on, us a little on, bit? Hold on, sorry. You smell nice, man. Yeah, Tom Ford. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're Ford. living right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're living paying well, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, no, honestly, I think when we had the call and the talks about what um, Beyond the Night was going to be about, I think the reason why I wanted to do it was because for a long time, I've always wanted to see what ex-players or players do outside of football. And um, I wanted it to be something that also my generation could be able to watch and, and look at and be like, yeah, that's someone that looks like me, sounds like me, and is asking those questions. And um, you guys gave me the opportunity to meet Paul Scholes, who is my idol. I love him. It's like my dad. And that's what I said to him as I said, yeah, dad. Um, and, it's, and, and it's that relationship that um, I wanted to build on camera so you guys could see as, especially what me as a football fan loves. And um, I think when you watch it, you'll see it's, it's very wholesome and it's very real. And it's also getting the questions that we all want to know. Um, not the normal TV questions, no disrespect, but um, I wanted to just go right, deep and yeah, yeah, I wanted to go deeper and just find a bit more about these players and we've been able to do that. So, so what did you find out about these guys? Because it's not only him; you've got Michael Owen on there as yes. well. We can't mention a couple. We've got a couple of others pending as well, as we can't say their names yet. But what did you find out about those two guys? Because some people say, "Oh, Michael Owen, ah, 
not that maybe a bit boring. And nah. I say, and I say, no, nah, no, nah, listen, no, he's, he's one of the funniest guys. So what did you funny. Find? What did I you think find? with with Michael, such a humble man. I think I was basically stroking his ego a bit and telling him you actually was one of the best players in the world. Um, and you're an you're an icon. But he won the Ballon d'Or, didn't he? Won the Ballon d'Or. Um, he's made a lot of money. Uh, rich, it's like honestly, <laughs> really like, rich. A lot of really. You, look, I don't know what Neverland looks like, but it's the closest thing. <laughs> honestly, to it. it's like <laughs> long, no, long, long driveway. Um, so many horses. It, it, um, they thought I was Stormzy, so I have to speak yeah. to him about it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was one of them. But um, other than that, no, he's a, he's, he's a lovely. So he's laughing. Too much laughing going on there. Um, no, it, he's a lovely guy. I think um, for me, it was just good to see what the players like outside of. It um, got a lot of humor, a lot of humbleness, and he loves the game. He loves being a striker. I mean, he said something along the lines of, "You know, I love horses and stuff, but there's no feeling better than putting the ball in the back of the net." And I think that kind of showed what type of person he is as well. Paul Scholes, one of the most funniest people I've ever met. I mean, dry, real dry, in it, dry humor, but it's it, it hits like ten seconds later. Like I'm like, oh, that, that's supposed that's supposed to laugh now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just incredible, and I hope when you guys watch it, you can kind of see exactly what we're trying to do here, um, breaking the lines, and also just bridging that 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 gap that's, that's been there for a long time. And we're doing really well by making it as close as possible. Now let's get into some football. Obviously, there's three Man United fans here. United, yeah, all right. So I think we should start off by by asking Steve. You haven't had a lot to say so far today. Um, I want to start off with your thoughts on uh, United's transfer window. What can you tell me about it? Are you happy? Are you pleased? What? It's, United seem like we're acting like a big club without getting all serious for a second. Look like we're getting rid of the dead wood. Harry Maguire's going. There's a sausage roll party tomorrow at three at mine. Um, <laughs> we're laughing at. Um, we brought in players that we need to bring in. Uh, it looks like there's Amrabat coming in. I think we've done all right. I think we're probably still a little bit lightweight, but you can't do everything in one window. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy. Yeah, and what about yourself, Rio? Um, I know you've got liberty to talk more about United now as you're not playing, and that's the good thing about five. You get to share your opinion. Mm. Have you found it tough as well? Sorry, by the way, sharing your honest opinion and still having friends in the industry at the same time? Well, when we're not winning, yeah. That's been the killer for me. That like, since I've retired, not since I've retired, but since like... <laughs> yeah, so that sounds a bit... Yeah, egomaniac. Um, yeah, but... Since coming into punditry, all I've been able to do is kind of talk about how bad we've been yeah. or we're not up to par, we're not living up to the history of the club and stuff like that. So it's been difficult in that sense. I'd, I'd much rather come into it that we're winning everything and you see the way I celebrate because I'm the best at celebrating. <laughs> but I ain't been able to do that at all, really. So it's been difficult in that sense. But I think this window has been, a, it's been a, a sound window and I think it's been... The most pleasing thing for me is that we haven't been taken into the latter stages of a window chasing a player, where we look desperate, where we look, we've got, we're just, we're just thinking, oh, that's going to change our whole picture for us with that one side, and that's how we've looked for the last ten years. Whereas this has been very methodical, very kind of decisive, and we want these guys. If it's going to be a long drawn out affair, we will move on quickly, and that's how they've been. And I think they've done that with Kane. They wanted Kane, I think, at the beginning of the window. Worked out, Levy's a difficult person to deal with. The price is going to be different for Man United to what it will be, as we've seen for Bayern Munich. So, thank you, but no thank you. The United tax, basically. Yeah. Erasmus Hoyland. Yes. You have a story for us, don't you? I do. Um, so, just before the season was about to end, um, I saw on, a, on, on Twitter and whatnot, X right now, but um, I saw that um, he potentially could be signing for United. So, I just thought, let me go search his Instagram, see... What this player's about, and he was following me. So I thought, you know what? Oh, was he? Agent P put my hat on, and I DM'd him. I said, "Manchester's home. I can come pick you up from the airport." And then fast forward to like the well the transfer window, the news started coming out, and I was like, "Boy, I've been doing this this work for a long time." So I already knew that he potentially was going to come to United. And ten percent now, Harry. I mean, twenty if you ask me. <laughs> Remember, I told you my son's got to eat, guys. So I need that money. But no, I think with Rasmus, he's a young striker, and kind of what you said, Rio. I didn't want to get Kane and then we're paying a mad amount of money for a player where we've got a potential type of player with, with Rasmus. Now, I know he hasn't been in the Premier League and he hasn't scored that much goals, but I think we're, we're signing the potential there. And we haven't spent crazy amount of money on players. We've bought low-key players who fit the system that Ten Hag wants. And I think that's, for me, why I'm a bit more happier than it's been previous seasons. Because we spent £80 million on Maguire. We spent... A lot of money on Lukaku. Fifty million on Fred. Chill out, you're saying a bit too much here. <laughs> so for me, I think I'm just I'm just happy that yeah, he's just doing a lot. I'm just happy that we're in a place right now where the managers, players that he wanted, we've got them. So I'm happy for this. It's season. mad that we're in a place now where we can say that we ain't spent a mad amount of money, but we spent seventy five on a young, unproven striker mm. and who's not got no 
pedigree in the Premier League. Yeah, but we spent you know, 60 million on, you know what else on we're a doing? midfielder. We're selling Rio. We've never done this before, yeah. right? We're going to get to the end of the window and be like, net spend champions of this window. Mm. We'll see. And the Deadwood, like you said, is gone. Like, Maguire's out of mm, the window. Nearly. De Gea was a, was a blunder keeper for us for a few seasons. I know he's a good friend of yours, but we needed to just be a bit more ruthless. And I think we've you know, you know, You know David De Gea won the Golden Glove last season? Yeah, and he cost you a lot of mistakes. Yeah, as well, no, but he won the Golden Glove. That's why stats Sorry. don't matter because he exactly. on, on paper he looked like he was the best keeper in the league. But I'm we just also saying, I'm just stating the fact he won the Golden Glove. Is he here or something? Is he here? I don't know. If he's still here. David, come out from behind that glove. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I, I understand it, but I just think where we're at right now. With Ten Hag, I, I like the way he handled the Ronaldo situation. He won it, four players of the years. All right, yeah. De- player, De- of the year, player of the year, <laughs> four of them. But I think, yeah, he's a good servant to the club, but I think it's, it's time for Ten Hag to implement the team that he wants. I think a lot of the time we've had managers who they don't want the, the players that are playing for them. There's, there's no excuses now for Ten Hag. I think the pressure's even on even more now because you've got rid of the players, bought who you want. Now it's time to go. It's good doing it. He's the greatest manager of all time, <laughs> in my opinion. And if you wanted to ask my prediction of the season, I think we're going to win it, boys. I think it's coming home. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> not a great pre-season. Got slapped out by Pre-season, Wrexham. I'm going to repeat, does not mean anything. Yeah. I told you this down there. Slapped by Real Madrid. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We beat you twice in one game. Yeah, but <laughs> can't really count it though, really, innit? <laughs> It was two, two games one in one game. one of them day. at least. Oh, come on, man. You were doing anyway. somersaults about the charity shield. That's pre-season. Because that, cha- that was a final. It's a plate. A final. It was a final. It's the oh, London Bangkok Cup. Plate. What are you on about? Final? What did Jose plate. say when he won it's it? It's not even a cup, it's a shield. What did Jose <laughs> say? Jose said it was a trophy. Joel, did, we're serving them sausage rolls tomorrow on it. What, what did Zlatan say? <laughs> These are trophy. not your players, though. Zlatan. But it's a trophy, though. What did Don Rhee say about it? It's a shield. I don't know. I can't exactly. Because it doesn't matter. It's, it's a non-existent cup for me, personally. It's not a cup. Yeah. It's, like a, it's, a, it's a plate. If you're hungry, you can feed the whole team on it. <laughs> not a great pre-season for Man United. If you can tell me your thoughts on that, Rhea. Pre-season means nothing. We used to go to Asia. Like Asia is one example for pre-season. And we would used to get pumped by teams. Like I'm so, Luckily, they didn't have the exposure that they get now and all of the, the media that follows all of these games because, they, was that your phone? No. That's a fine. Yeah. <laughs> Flex, oh, wow. Flex stood here and gave us no, housekeeper no. rules and you ignored everything. The thing everything. is, I didn't know I was going to come over here. It's a big moment for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and yeah, I mean, if, if I was, if I personally was being judged on pre-season performances, I would not have started many games for Man United. I was terrible. Because all I was searching for was fitness. It wasn't about quality. It, wasn't a, it was just, please get me fit for the day, for the first day of the season. And nine times out of ten, I probably weren't even fully fit for that game either. So the results, you bear in mind as well, we used to train sometimes in the morning before an evening game in pre-season. So you're going into it, your legs are all gone anyway. And they're probably doing the same thing now. So pre-season has no... Be- and we'd win the league... A lot of the times, by the way, bad preseason and then win the league, and people go, "Yeah, you had a bad." They wouldn't on you had a bad preseason, though, didn't you? I've seen us have some relevant. unreal preseason. Like we popped Real Madrid with one touch football under Louis. Opening game of the season, lose to Swansea. Yeah, that Martial goal as well. Relevant. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> Ashley Williams said, Ashley Williams said he played oh, that shit, one. Shit, it was, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what did you see out there, Steve? Because you was just in the US for the United tour. I saw, we was in a player's hotel, which United did not like, by the way. And what I saw up close was the players. Sorry, did the players talk to you? Like, what did Harry Maguire, because you've hammered Luke Shaw and Harry Maguire. When they see you, what's their reaction? So I'd love to be there. Harry Maguire proper checked out the sky anytime I was anywhere near. Well, just... <laughs> the low comes over, gives a hug. He's with Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire stands out like that, mate. That's not been introduced. It was really awkward. Mm. Um, the, the unbelievables happened. Me and Luke Shaw have gone to the gym at the same time. It is, I swear, this big. There are three pieces of equipment in them, and he's on two of them. And I walk in and go, all right? And he goes, all right? I get on the treadmill, and I'm like, this is so fucking awkward, man. And I go, it's not a big gym, is it? And he's like, no, not really. I was like, fuck me, I'm getting out of here. This is well shit. <laughs> <He's left>. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But now the players were cool. But what I saw with the players hanging out with each other, it was really relaxed. And it looked like there was a good energy about the place as well. And I know it's hard. I haven't got a ton of experience watching them up close. But the vibe that I was getting was like, yeah, this is good. Like, I saw Bruno. I was like, hey, are we winning something this year or what? And he went, 
everything. I was like, oh, shit. All right. Like, this is a good energy, man. Everyone was uh, having it apart from Maguire. <laughs> no, that's really good. So basically, there's high expectations for Man United this season. Don't start with that already. I'm asking you. How have is you this interpreted simple? that? How have no, you well, interpreted he's that? just, well, that's what he's saying though, right? Who? Steve or Bruno, <laughs> whoever, right? All right, Bruno's saying that, but he's got to say that. But I'm asking Club you. Captain. I'm asking you from Be what you've defense, seen. Steve, just say it, man. Exactly. Just say it. What? Just oh, we're finishing it. above Arsenal, Joel. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. Yeah. We'll have a talk about Arsenal soon anyway. But uh We've got a lot of Arsenal fans in the house. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah. I smelled something and I thought, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's coming from them. It's the, it's the manure. Yeah, it's the manure. I thought we had a policy. Yeah. But uh, you know what? You've been on here for too long. Yeah, honestly, I'll be honest with you. This is a bit too much for me. Harry, honestly. Guys, but anyway, Harry, be on the night, you mate. Make sure you catch See you later, guys. Night, subscribe yeah. to my YouTube. I sat these milk. Like. <laughs> now, it's not good, man. We are going to talk a little bit more um, about our clubs and stuff like that, but uh, there is a Women's World Cup happening and uh, we happen to have England's most capped player inside the building. Most capped player, male <laughs> most and capped. female. Is Farah Williams inside? I can see her. Farah, come can, on. Come up to the front. Can Farah come most, down Most there? capped England player. I'm very sure no one told Farah she's coming on the stage right now. That's how she's shaking her head. You guys uh, set me up. She's got a gin and tonic. Look. We did. We did set you up. We did. We what did. trainers have you got on today? I know you have a big pair of trainers. Come on. Yeah, look, see. Trainer freak. Tell everyone about your show because she's got a great show on on the platform, which is is, is really good. It's, it tells who you got on there with you, kind of topics you guys cover, and you get honest, real, gritty, as we've seen today, <laughs> opinions on the women's game. Yeah, boots, balls, and bra. Um, <laughs> I'm glad we have one fan in the house. <laughs> her co partner's at the back. Her presenter, yeah. presenter's at the back there. It's no one from MS, is it? <laughs> Um, yeah, just a podcast. It's just obviously I do punditry, and sometimes on when you're broadcasting, you have to be careful with what you say about certain topics. Or yeah, we players. don't get this far on BBC. Exactly, you have to be careful what you say and, and the things that you say and topics you talk about. Whereas I just want it to be a bit raw, um, be honest and open with my opinions of where I see things. I do it with my best friend who we grew up with. She's at the back there. I can see her big head, kind of <laughs> like a little meerkat trying to see in. <laughs> Yeah, and we just do it. We do it together, and I think that you know it's a bond that you know you can't buy our bond that we have, and I think you can see that in our podcast, mm. uh, really raw and honest. I think um, it's, it's definitely proper, authentic. What's the feedback been like when you go out and people who have seen the show? What do they say to you? Yeah, they like it. They said it's a no bullshit um, podcast. So that's mm. the exact words that you get when you re go into my inboxes. It's like, oh, mum likes it. Mum says they don't chat crap. So I'm like, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> So I think there's too many people out there that say the right things or say things that they want other people to hear. And of course, I want to do that. And there's times where we will do that. Mm -hmm. But there's also times where things needed to be highlighted. The game, our game especially, is growing. But there's things that still need to be spoken about in order to improve. Do you believe that the, there's, a, there's a big like clamour for, from a certain quarter of people that would say that the women's game should be paid like the way the men's game is? Do you agree with that or not? No. No. Why? We're nowhere there yet. Can we get there? Who knows? I don't know where the game can go, but we're certainly nowhere near there. There's not enough sponsorship involved. We still don't get seats. Bums on seats in stadiums. We can't fill stadiums. We can off one-off games. Um, but even before that, even before we talk about players should be getting the same amount of money, we should be playing in big stadiums. The, the facilities, the, the staffing, there's not enough of that. So the, the stuff that is needed in order to allow them to be elite athletes isn't there at every club. Mm. So even the likes of, I mean, Arsenal this year, I'm working with a coach on the BBC punditry. They're only now getting a diet and nutritionist in. Now, there's a huge, huge problem in the women's game with food, diet, how people feel they need to look, anorexia and whatever else, eating disorders. It's terrible that nobody wants to talk about. I can sense a, a five documentary coming on. It's here. coming out. Don't worry, I've been asked already. <laughs> <laughs> My, my question is, where do you You're see... not making me sound like I'm a miserable no, person. No, 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 I am, no. I am, guys, She's you know not what? To be like fair, this, I am a little bit in the mood today. She's not normally like this. <laughs> I've had a long day. My question is, my final question is, where do you see BBB going? Oh, who knows? Um, and what do you want from it as well? So two questions. Um, I want it to be authentic, different to other platforms and things that other people are doing. Obviously knowing the players and having access to players will probably help drive that and kind of allow us to speak to them and see them outside of being an athlete. Um, 
yeah, I wanted to, for me, I don't like being in a studio. I like to be on the road with people, uh, meeting and, and taking them into their comfort zones where they can be open and honest, because that's what the podcast's about. I don't want to be doing a podcast where they're talking to us about things that everybody already knows about them. So maybe just touch a little bit deeper into them, allow people to see them on a different level. That's really good. Guys, can we give Farah a round of applause? She's looking at me like, can I go now? Thank you, Farah. You can catch her show on five and of course on audio across the board. Thank you very much. Uh, Rio, now, I don't like to overstay my welcome on the stage. So I want to do a section here that's special. So basically predictions in it, what we think is going to happen this season. Uh, but I don't think we should do it alone. I think we should invite our friend, Steve's co-host on the Steve and Ash show, which still hasn't been named yet. Um, former Wales captain, former Swansea, Everton, lots of different clubs. Mr. Ashley Williams, please come up. Mr. Ashley Williams, come up. Come on. Ash, get us a pro while you're doing that. Has anyone seen these two shows? It's a nightmare, seriously. <laughs> they talk about absolutely nothing, seriously. And oh, that's oh, what the audience oh, Yeah, everything? and that's what the audience loves about it. Octopuses. To be fair. Yeah. In fact, you know how, how would you fight an octopus? That's what? stupid questions like that, isn't it? Well, how would you fight an octopus? <laughs> that that well, exactly. How would you fight an octopus? So, let's not go there. No, but if you was in the sea. And the, but I wouldn't be. No, but what if you was in it? No, but I wouldn't you're fight in, an right, octopus. Well, put yourself in this picture. You're in Dubai, you're just in waist high water, like Dubai. and then an octopus comes, big one. What are you going to do? Hey, Ash, I seen him training for that Betfair thing. Just leave it. <laughs> yeah, I just lay down and just accept whatever's going to happen. <laughs> just take me. Before, before we go into the predictions, actually, what, what, what made you want to start a show with Steve? What happened? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, um, obviously, Rio went through the history of, 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 you know, how he came about with the five thing. And he was, they've, these three have been scrambling about for quite a lot of years and trying to get to a million <laughs> subscribers. So I said, like, I'll... Oh, I'll come on and help you out. <laughs> now, I, to be honest, I think that um, I obviously went straight from football into the punditry and that's down to Jake. Big up Jake, wherever you are. I don't know where you are, but you need to shout out because he created this whole thing. Um, but so Jake kind of shoved me into the punditry, which I didn't want to do. And um, it's weird because as captain, you have to do loads of press conferences, media days, and I didn't like it. And now I end up doing that. that I'm on the other side. So, um, so I was doing that and then I think it was in the World Cup maybe or something. It was like, we just had the thought where I worked for the BBC where you have to be a little bit more... Stiff. <laughs> you have to sit upright and talk properly a little bit. And it was like, oh, why don't you do a show um, where you can just be yourself a little bit more and have a bit of fun? So Steve's got a studio in, in Manchester where I live and, um, and me and Steve get on well. So it was like, okay, we'll just do it. So I remember the first one was like... Um, well, I said, Steve, what are we going to talk about? He said, well, we just talk about whatever. So it ends up being two geezers just talking about whatever. What, when you like, uh, well, if you've ever had a night out at 2 a.m. in the pub, what you talk about, that is me and Steve <laughs> at 11 a.m. on a Thursday, really. So that's The it. best one, never seen the light of day either. No, because this is, I'll tell you what happens, right? Because so, we... Sorry, sorry, wait, wait, can I just say, go on. we've got a group, yeah, a WhatsApp group, right, where... After pre-show, they talk about what they're going to talk about. And then after the show, a little bit of a, like a fallout comes out. And all you ever see after the 11 o'clock show on the WhatsApp group is, right, so what you're going to have to cut out is yeah. this. You're going to have to cut this out. Everything's about what you're going to cut out. No, so. because the thing is, right, so Jake sends us the structure and then we just completely divert off that straight away. And then Jake is responsible for me having a career now because most of the stuff has to get cut. Because you know what it's like when you get going with your mate? Libelous, you just, you libelous, yeah. slanderous. Yeah, a lot of stuff can't be spoken about. When you got a contract with the BBC, it's a little bit, uh, I don't know, Jake saves us a little bit. And Tom, shout out to Tom, because he has to edit that. He has to edit down two hours to like 40 minutes of just something that's allowed to be said. And it's still risky. Um, okay, so we're going to start off now with the predictions. Uh, I'm going to start off with you, Steve. Let's do relegation. No. Why are you so morbid? Exactly. You're always like no, that. No. <laughs> this no. is what I have to deal with. No. You're always like a negative guy. Exactly. Man. Relegation's beautiful because they get to have a good time next year. I've gone and started relegation. Flip your thinking, who's, who's getting relegated? Luton. Defo. Luton is everyone's <laughs> team, isn't it? 
<laughs> Mate, Ross Barkley's going to wake up in someone's oh, garden at some point. Sign this morning, <laughs> I mean, he's going to be like, yeah, mate, where's the fucking entrance? Like? <laughs> yeah, true. He's going to get lost. Yeah, Luton's going down. Who else? Yeah, I'm for Luton. Luton. Uh, Wolves on going. Defo. Wolves ain't bought a player yet, have they? I think, I think Everton are. Are they, gonna, are they going to be able to scrape it? I don't know. Daesh, I think Daesh might get a tune out of it, but just they might scrape it again, maybe. If Wolves weren't, hadn't had, had such a bad transfer window, then I would have mm. probably said Everton. Berlin, no? No, Company, I think, has got them playing good football. I, don't, I think they, they might You stay said up. Company are going down earlier to I'm, me. I'm nodding. Is I'm that cause, only because Company's Man City and you're like, yeah. I've read. Wrong. I like him. I think he's done a great job. And I think they did make like last him, year. Don't lie. I do like him. You don't. I've, I'm on record saying I like the you guy. You don't like him. I do like <laughs> the guy. Oh, you like no one. Drink. What? You don't like anyone. Yeah, I do. I like what? company. You don't like it. Tell the truth. I do like him. Tell the truth from the people. <laughs> I like Vincent Company. <laughs> hey, clip it up, please, Tom. Thank you. Um, right, but... But what? <laughs> Daniel Farks Norwich. Is that what you think See, he is? That's a million percent. He, they pop the championship. They they can play all this good football. They're not going to have a possession. He's going to bottle it as soon as City puts six past them. He's going to try and do a formation he's never played before. And they're going down. Wow. I thought you liked him. So who's your favorite? And that's when he likes someone. Yeah. So you can imagine. So uh, going I'm down? going... Where's your buy? No, I'm going... West Ham manager by the end of the season or what? Who? Lamps. No, no. <laughs> are we getting, are we getting yeah. a show on here Lampard's or what? the last person they're going to take as West Ham manager. <laughs> What is he more likely to be on here or what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what we got? We we, we agree on Wolves. Wolves, Wolves and Luton are done. And Luton. Uh, I think Sheffield United. It's too much for them. That's me. That's me. That's my three. All right. Uh, Joel. Me. Please. Everton. I don't think they're going to escape it again. I just I just don't see it. Um, Luton. I don't think they've got anything in them. And then. Maybe Wolves. Maybe Wolves. Well, Sheffield sure. United staying up then? Maybe. They surprised us last time. Maybe right. Wolves. Wolves go on then. Finished. We'll see. What's next? Top five. I'll go first. I'm only saying top five because there's a, there's a lot of good teams now. So. Yeah, what happened to the top four? You should be top four. Well, yeah, yeah, but... <laughs> All right. money, I'm, I'm going to go Man City top, unfortunately. Um, I know, that's how I feel. Um... <laughs> Man United second. <laughs> <laughs> what was that about? Really? That's disrespectful. <laughs> um, Man United second. Arsenal third. No. And Liverpool fourth. Can I ask you a question, yeah? How have you got United finishing above Arsenal when you're a million miles off us? You didn't come anywhere near second last year. So what's that about? A million miles. A million miles. You are? Wow. A million have miles. Have you seen the table last season? Did you see how, what happened when we played you last This season? is basically the group chat every day. <laughs> that, and that is why I mute it. Because, <laughs> because, wait, wait, wait. Because uh, no, no, uh, you're, talk, you're talking as if you've got like... You how know, many games did United signings? play last season? 6,000. Yeah. How many did they play? Four. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you have an injury no, by the way. Yeah. No. A striker with oh, how many Gabriel, goals? Gabriel, wait, wait, wait. Gabriel Jesus wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Striker. Wait, wait, wait. How many goals did our number nine score? Oh, uh, none. Zero. Is that my fault? No, but I'm saying, we, and we were still just behind We still us. came first. But you're not just behind us though, really, innit? We had Ronaldo like, retire. We, De Gea retired in the middle of the season. We had, who else retired? Maguire. <laughs> Maguire retired. You're so off it, yeah. It's ridiculous. Like, don't let that. Respect that their prediction. Let nah, but no, 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 why are you disrupting? I've even got through my list. Fifth, I've got um, fifth. I've got Newcastle. Wow. Ash, what's your five? <laughs> five. City first. His boys second. Come on, Ash. Sorry, come on, Ash. Who do you support, Ash? I don't really support anyone. Oh. Like, so like that's why I'm neutral because otherwise it'd be a Man United night. Mm. By the sounds of it, oh, that's all I've heard from back there. So I'm trying to. There's, a, there's a lot of Arsenal fans here, you know. It, there's a few of us. They ain't, but you know why? Because it's calm in here. <laughs> There'd be chaos if there was more Arsenal in here. I'm going Arsenal second. Yeah. Man United third. Liverpool fourth. I think Villa might sneak the fifth. What? It's from Birmingham. It's from Birmingham. Wow. It's from Birmingham. Wow. I've wow. realised. Wow. wow. Emery's doing a bit, you know. No, I think they'll be alright, but he ain't coming. They're in, in Europa, that. though, aren't they? So that yeah, takes no. a bit out. He's yeah. winning the Europa. Where's your opinions? I don't mind yet, and you ain't done yours. Go on then. All right, okay. Arsenal fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing at. Why? 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 I'll tell you why. Because they totally phoned in 
Every single competition by the league last year was top of it for 93% and still didn't fucking win it, right? So how does that mean that we're going to come fifth then? Wait, wait, let him finish. Why yeah. are you getting involved? <laughs> I just want to know because it seems a it's bit It's called storytelling, Joel. I was building a scene. Go on, go on, yes. Go on, Housen. This year, as you've already proved in the four days since winning a pre-season game... What, the trophy? In, a, in the 111 minutes this Shield. weekend... <clears throat> Yeah, you've won the sausage roll plate this weekend. You've all over-celebrated it as normal. I've seen Arsenal fans proclaiming Champions League 24. We're winning the league. We're beating. They've just done a treble. What can we do? Sorry, oh. where is Archie? There's a kid called Archie in here who said that they will win the Champions League because it's the easiest one to win out of the Premier League and the Champions League. There, that's an Arsenal fan right there. Sorry, Archie. So that's Arsenal fan mentality. Yeah. So I called it last year. The pressure that team's going to be on because your fans are mental, right? is going to be so much to take. And that's why you're going to fail. You're going to be expected to do better because widgets like him think you're going to win the Champions League. <laughs> so you're going to, you can't phone it in and go out to group stage, right? You're going to have to actually bother your asses to do something in it this year. And you didn't do that last year. You was playing the likes of Vieira who didn't even get a single Premier League sub appearance. He started every single Europa League game. You're not going to be able to do that this year. You actually have to turn up in two games a week and you ain't got it in you. Joe. Fourth. Oh, wow. <laughs> See that? That was him just going, <laughs> shit. He's right. Um, Go on then, fourth. fourth. Liverpool, no? Chelsea. Chelsea? Yeah, I think Chelsea have got that week off and just been able to focus on one game a week. I think he's massive. Yeah. And I think there's enough talent in that. So he's spent about a billion in the last two years, haven't they? Like they've got enough talent and to Kunku, put their best out. players out now. He's injured. But he will be back. Three so bucks. I think... Uh, I think they'll do something. I think they'll they'll be enough to get into the top four. My only worry with Chelsea is that I, I understand what you're saying. They're going to have weeks to prepare, straight six, five, six days to prepare, which is really, really good and useful for Pochettino to get help Newcastle mold this his team. Yeah. yeah, but they've they've pushed out a huge amount of experience and brought in loads of potential. Mm. So you, it's almost like you just don't know what you're going to get. Do you know what I mean? The inconsistency could be there throughout the yeah. season. But I think they'll just, with, with enough time, I think Poch will be able to do it with a week. Okay. Uh, third, Liverpool. You don't like Poch Tino, do you? He's all right at a small club like Chelsea. Oh, okay. Can't do oh. it at a big gaff. You didn't say that when you see him the other day. When was it? When why, why are you just lying? He was hugging him. He was asking for selfies. No one. He said he hated him. Hated him. When we had him in the studio, I deliberately came late and watched him from afar to see how he would be around him. And he was standing there like a kid in a sweet shop saying... Can Do you think selfie? that happened? Do you offer a selfie lying? or not? Do you offer a selfie or not? No. Don't lie. <laughs> He's lying. <laughs> Why is he lying? Didn't happen. Anyway, anyway okay, go yeah, on. So third. third Liverpool. I think they've uh, they've got some good signings and they'll probably be able to write it. I mean, they finished strong last year. I think people are writing off because they were so bad early doors, but they'll finish strong. Second United, but probably a long second. They second and second, didn't they? And I think United will be a long way. Just want to be there, just in case City have over celebrated with a treble Grealish might have Grealish definitely did definitely did by the way I'd love to have had like a body cam on him for the whole summer <laughs> he went out and he's, have you ever gone out straight in your kit for three days no I haven't actually that's a madness that yeah, isn't that's, it that's, that's, sliders that's, still got his shin pads in not that's having living it. that's living right, isn't it? that's living <laughs> mate people are like oh, you can't get him wearing that and he's coming in in a kit he's still got shin he's in imagine, mate what's imagine, going on imagine the pay per view on that oh. Unbelievable. There was no one with a, no one was allowed with a phone a mile away from Grealish, mm. was there? Security, yeah, four <laughs> security men constantly around him. Anyway, final one. Player of the season. Mm. Who do you reckon it's going to be? <laughs> Player of the season? I don't know, man. Haaland. Haaland. Oh, no. He can't repeat that. Can he repeat that? Of course he can. Can Harder repeat that? 51 yeah. goals. No, not 51. You don't have no, to get 51 goals to be player of the season, though. No, no. I'm... What? <laughs> you don't, he doesn't have to get the same numbers. He can still do really well and get it. Can he repeat 51 goals is what I was saying, though. That's not the question, Ria. No, but I'm just... <laughs> I'm, building the, I'm building the scene here. This is his channel. He can make the questions up as he goes. I'm sorry. I think... No, but I don't see, in all honesty, how... I don't know who who what's the what's the format for stopping him right now. How would you stop him? Would you use the centre half? How would you stop him? Kick the shit out of him and would just you? hope for the best. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what are you going to do? He's stronger than you. He's quick and he's got the ammunition behind him. Mm. Just so, saying, he, he didn't get no shots on target against Saliba. 
on the weekend during the final, by the way, just saying. And he came off in like 60-something You know minutes. what, though? He, did, he, he was terrible in last year's Charity Shield against... Would, against, against yeah, uh, do you remember that? Remember, Nunez, Nunez his... was everyone after the Charity Shield last year. He was going, oh my God, he's the man. Harlan's going uh, hey, to struggle. What happened Harlan to Liverpool after, after that? Water. He wasn't as bad as people are making him out to be. I was there. Who? Harlan. I want to know, how has Saliba got airtime tonight? Because he's the best centre-back that the Premier League has at the moment. That's why. Oh, no. Wow. No, he's not. He's played one season. He says he's the so best. What? You he's got Varane in there. Who's Varane's Varane. five-time Champions Varane. League winner. Varane. Varane's got a lot of medals, but he's not even the best centre-back in Man United at the moment. He's not wow. better than Martinez. There's a high bar at United unlike Arsenal. He's not. Varane, Varane's not better than any of the Man City defenders. I mean... Pardon? He's not. Who's he better than? Do you know what? I can't do this again, Aki. John. Varane's better than Varane's, Varane's better than Varane's, no, forget Varane's, Varane's better than Nikanji. Varane at Manchester United. Than he hasn't done Varane's much. Varane's better than all of them. At at Manchester hey, United? Yeah. No, they, got, they got like seven centre-halves. He's better than that. <laughs> he's, not, he's not better. If you had a cup final tomorrow, out of them who you I'm play. not picking Varane. No way. Champions no League way. Varane? No, you're talking about titles. I'm talking You've about if you strip the, the titles. Put the mic down right now. Rio, if you strip the titles and you look at them <laughs> player for player, he's not better than Stones. steve can he's you come not. and take over, please? Stones. <laughs> steve uh, come and take he's over. Not. He's got a West, West Ham shirt. He's not. Is that West Ham shirt? <laughs> Taking the motors? You're not playing that. I didn't. <laughs> I'll sign that. It's a nice shirt, that, you know. Dagging the motors. You know, I had, I had a car off them. Dagging the motors. Club car. <laughs> you know, when I was eighteen, Ford Mondeo. Gav, my mate, best mate Gavin's in here. Ford Mondeo. We used to think we were the men. Yeah. Riding around. <laughs> Ford, doing that on a Ford Mondeo. Imagine doing that on a Ford Mondeo like that. You should not do that, should you? It should be push and pull. <laughs> <laughs> so go on. Signing of the season. Signing of the season. Oh, player oh, of the season. Sorry, no. Player of the season. Signing of the season is going to be Onana, think... for sure. Uh, on Onana, you go. Yeah. yeah. Signing of the season. It'll be so transformative for us. Definitely Onana. I think Onana has the ability, the capabilities to transform the style of football that Man United play. I think he, he's the catalyst for changing the exact... Like, when you look at the way the Man United played last season and the Ten Hag, you're going to see the real Ten Hag way of playing football this season, potentially. Agree. If he stops getting lobbed. I'm not buying that. I'm, I'm, the, I'm with you, but I knew he was going to say that. So yeah, I wanted to say it. You got a lot from the halfway line. What are you talking about? You're not it buying it. You need to watch more football, Joel, honestly. <laughs> Gosh, where did he get love from then? It the doesn't matter where he got love from. Keepers get love. He's marking that entire half of the pitch. Line. All right. Don't, don't give we him flowers. He don't want to deal with flex. He got flipping love when he actually counted. Wait, wait, wait. We don't want to talk about that now. Thank you, Flex. about that afterwards. All right. Okay, cool. So we've done player of the season. We have all we all agree it's Harlan, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah okay. we've done signing. Of the, you're saying signing of the season. And Kunku, I'm saying. Ash, you say signing of the season? No, I, I, I was going to say Onana until you started getting a little bit defensive mm -hmm. about the hey. I'll tell you, it's I'm not. Like, switch it. Have a <laughs> beat. Should we say that? Beat. <laughs> Who? Yeah. Have a. Why don't we do a not signing of the season? Go on then. <laughs> Kai. <laughs> do you not think Havertz is a good signing? I, I, I think he's all right, but he's not what they need. They need more than that. As I a nine. I don't think Havertz starts in their best team. 65 million for 65 a backup player for a sub. Oh, oh. Can, can I just say something team. right? Can I just say something? If you, Joel's hosting, which is great, and everything is doing a great job. He has got so much more to say than he's saying tonight. Oh, no, he scared. says so much normally, yeah? And tonight is just quiet. I feel like you're nervous. No, because I don't have much to say about Kai Havertz. That's all. You just got to support your boys and see how it goes, isn't it? What? Are you nervous? Are you nervous about the whole season? No, I think the season's going to be good. I think... Normally you're strong in your in your, no, what you're saying. Strong and wrong. I just think with Kai... <laughs> I just think with Kai, I didn't see that signing coming. And uh, for £65 million, I Are agree. you happy with your window? I am, overall. £170 a, million it, on two players. No, but if you look at the package... It's three. If you look at the package, Timber, Timber. excellent. He's a good signing. Yeah, yeah he's, he's very right, good. We'll include him. That's £300 million, Yeah, no, no, it wasn't that expensive. No, he, he's very good, Timber. I think Declan Rice is going to be the signing of the season. <laughs> I think, About 100 mil? 105 yeah, mil? Yeah, I think because with hey. him, it's not necessarily um, what he... Not just what he brings to the pitch, but that's a statement signing. When was the last time Arsenal went out there and said, this is the man Pepe. we want? Yeah, Pepe. No. <laughs> About four years ago. Where's he playing now, by the way? Who, Pepe? Yeah. I'm not sure. Is it Bessic Nash or someone trying to buy him? 
I'll take our three, three cups. <laughs> but yeah, Declan Rice for me. Seventy-two mil. Season. Pepe was. Do you know how good you Declan have, Rice is going to have to be? One hundred and five million. Do you want to go through this my lines? This is what Joel does. Yeah, we no, know you we're talking about Arsenal, in. and you go well, and you start questioning him. He brings it back to me. I'm asking you about your club, bro. Yeah, but listen, you're talking about seventy-two million as if we've wasted money. What have you done with your money in the last five so to ten Pepe years? So was Pepe a waste of money or not? Was Di Maria a waste of money? Was no, Falcao a waste of money? No, we, the list can go on. No, no, I, I, it's not no, a no, comparison. Ask, 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 it's not like comparison.com or anything like that. Compare the market. But that's what you're this making. This is, it. I'm just asking you, Pepe, what was, he, was he a waste of money or not? We could have used the money more efficiently. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask me. Okay, that's all I needed right. to hear. Where are we? <laughs> hey, do you know Graham Sooners is going to be demanding 25 goals minimum off rice? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. for a, for a or, midfielder. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That, them's the rules. It's okay. True. So, what have you said in signing of the season? Declan Rice, by the way. You know, Onana. Onana. You've agreed with him. Yeah? Is that what you think as well? Yeah, I, wow. I, I think that, 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 that uh, this is a touchy subject for you. If you weren't here, I'd have more to say. But like, I've go on, just go. No, I do think that he's gonna. In the get, you know what it's like today. That the goal when we play, the goalie might have been to stop shots. Yeah. But now he starts attacks, and he's gonna, and it gives you an extra player on the pitch. I agree. So you can't. If you if you go full press now, all of a sudden, then you got issues. You got issues behind the midfield. You got issues behind the front line, and he'll pick that pass out. So I think it gives you something a little bit different. Who gets more assists, Declan Rice or Onana? Oh, is that a we love that place? Yeah, because I think it might be none and one. So it's not going to be loads, is it? But it might be none and one. I think Declan will score and assist much more than he's ever done in his career. Yeah, this season. That's, that's like one, two. No, no, because he's, he's playing in a more advanced role, I think. When, Do you with, not with like Declan Rice either? Like, he hates him. You what? Oh, my God. He hates mate. Declan Rice. Scott McTominay in a different rapper, Thursdays. mate. What are we doing? <laughs> this is why Thursdays are the hardest day of the week for me, because you hate everyone. I don't hate him. Just because I don't rate him don't mean I hate him. You don't hate everyone apart from Yap Stan. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> like, he's true. fucking good, though, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, you know what? Is that it? I think that's it. Myself, Rio, Steve, all the people at Five, uh, New Era Global, we're really happy that you guys have come. Massive shout out to the Pavilion as well. And for those of you guys watching online, make sure you like, share, comment and subscribe. And we will be back soon. Peace. <laughs>